Um, when we talk about the average in statistics, we're talking about central tendency. And so when I say let's jump into the middle, central tendency is what helps you explain what's at the middle of your data. So the numbers that are falling in the average area. Okay? Um, there are essentially four ways to measure central, central tendency. You have mean, median, mode, and range. So the range is pretty simple. If you have a set of numbers like 3, 7, 4, 5, 7, 6, 7, 9, you just take the lowest number and the highest number and find out the difference, and that's your range. Okay? Pretty straightforward. So in this case, your range would be 6. The difference between 9 and 3 is 6. So there's your math. I know. But I think we're still doing good on the math. Um, so in your data can, uh, output, let's look at the central tendency, the range. Um, and it'll be found under descriptive. So it'll look like this. It'll be descriptive statistics, and it'll be the one with intrinsic goal orientation, extrinsic goal orientation, past value, and all of those. No, that's not my issue. Okay. Uh, what's your issue? We go ahead on. I get you. Okay. Um, so looking at this, what would be our range for self-efficacy of learning performance? Three point five. Three point five. Right. And how did we get three point five? We looked at the chart. But could we have gotten it if that range column wasn't there? Yes. Okay, how? All right, you guys are pros. Take the minimum and the maximum and find the difference. Okay? Pretty easy piece. Good. Um, so, and there it is in large. So let's look at the next one. Mean. When we think of mean, we're usually thinking of the arithmetic average, okay? Um, but in, in statistics, we refer to it always as the mean. And the reason that I stress this is because it's used in a lot of formulas in statistics, and they will always, always, always say mean, okay? Mean this, mean that. But it's really very nice, okay? Um, it, I think everyone probably knows how to do the average. I'm glad someone likes my jokes. <laughs> There's only one or two that are laughing, but that's all right. Um, it, it's essentially the average. So if you take that same set of numbers that we looked at before, add them all together, they equal 48. Because there's a total of eight numbers, we divide by eight, and we get six. Thank you. See, I can't do math. Um, one thing, though, about the mean, and one of the reasons that we have all these different ways to look at the center, is because sometimes this average isn't very meaningful, okay? Especially when you have a small set of numbers. So if you only have a few numbers, um, say eight numbers, six numbers, and it's three, 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 five, five, and 900. Well, all of a sudden, that this average of 153 isn't very meaningful in describing that set of numbers, right? So here is an instance where mean doesn't make sense to use to describe the numbers. And a lot of times, uh, the US government, instead of describing the average of, uh, of income for citizens in the United States, the average doesn't really, doesn't, isn't a meaningful number because you have people that, you know, you've got, most of the United States making smaller numbers, and then you've got a few people making these big numbers, right? So it wouldn't make sense to talk about the average income. In one right, exactly. Um, so looking at your descriptive statistics, again, the same table you were looking at before. Uh, this time I didn't go, uh, go in. 
What's the mean for tax value? 6.1, yes. So really, <coughs> it's really nice because you don't have to sit there and add up all the numbers and do the dividing. The computer's going to do it for you. But you do need to know where to go to find the statistic, okay? So when that is the right number. And that might be a little confusing because it says mean for both of those columns. And um, we're not going to talk about standard, standard error. I'm just going to sort of pump that to the next quantitative class you take. Um, <laughs> but, but it is important that you be able to identify where to find the mean. <coughs> so, mode. Mode is uh, the number that occurs most often. So in this case, if you have 3, 7, 4, 5, 7, 6, 7, and 9, the mode is Seven, because you have three of them in there and no other number occurs more than once. Uh, but what if you had three fives and three sevens? And you're almost there, Leslie. One more step. Take the two, add, add them together, and divide by, divide by two. Good. So you had the right idea. You just needed to finish the thought. So um, let's look at central tendency. And this time, I want you to look through your um, output and find the intrinsic goal orientation. Yes? You can have more than one mode. You can. You can have five and seven. Yes. Yes. Actually, I think I just, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, because then it would be bimodal. So I apologize. I just confused everyone. I just explained how to find the median. But, Leslie, just to correct, you can have five and seven as the mode. Thank you for that correction. Um, it's always harder to talk math when you're standing up in front of you. So going into this particular table, has everyone found this one on their output? And if you followed along with the videos, you should have the same output that I have. All right. So um, what would be the mode for intrinsic goal orientation? mode for the data of intrinsic goal orientation? Yes. Why is it six? Yes, because ten people answered six. So what we did was we looked at the frequency, okay, and if you look through, only one person <coughs> said four, um, three people had a 4.5, on intrinsic goal orientation, but 10 people had 6 on intrinsic goal orientation. So 6 is the mode. Yes? I know, this is very review, but I want everyone to feel confident about what this information means. So now we get to median. The fourth way of finding average, or being average. So, when numbers are put from lowest to highest, so when they're put in order from lowest to highest, um, the median is the number that occurs in the middle. Okay? I like to think of, me I, I always remember median because I think of a median and a highway. Mm -hmm. Like that is my reminder. And um, mode rhymes with something, but I always forget that one. Most. Most. Thank you. There's some teachers in there, in here, aren't there? There's some people we've taught before. Um, so in this case, um, what would be the median in this second set of numbers? of the data is in the sense of half the scores are above and half are below. So 
Let's look at the extrinsic goal orientation, the table that has the uh, frequencies, again, and the scores. Good. People are scrolling through or paging through. <coughs> now, I went ahead and put the line on there for you so that you wouldn't have to do all the counting. But if 27 of the scores were above that line and 27 of the scores were below that line, what then would be your median? Hmm? 5.12. Good. So you would add the 5 and the 5.25, which would get you right around 5.12 or 5.13. Actually, 5.125. Right? Okay. I feel like everyone has a firm grasp of these. So now, let's, now that we're still in the middle, let's talk about the normal curve and how central tendency relates to this normal distribution thing. How many people here feel like they know what a standard deviation is? Okay. How many people feel like they know what a normal curve is? How many people understand what that normal distribution is all about? All right. Okay. Well, then I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Um, one thing that's really important when we talk about the normal distribution is the percentage of people that fall within each standard deviation. So a standard deviation, uh, the normal distribution is your normalized data. And when we start talking about standard deviations, it's because we've standardized the score. So we can say that 68% of our population um, will fall between a negative one standard deviation and a one standard deviation of the mean. Okay? I'm getting some, some furrowed eyebrows. So if zero is our mean, one standard deviation means that... Um, I will. I think it's easier to use IQ, actually. Um, well, let me talk about that in a minute. Let's, let me back up just a minute, because I really want to talk about the percentages on the curve. Because what's cool is, when you have a normal curve, everyone that falls within the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, it's 34.13% of your population. Always. So this, the standard deviation moves around based on your data, okay? And I think that that's a really important thing to remember because when we start to look at scores <coughs> on a normal distribution, we start to have very small, small percentages that fall towards the extreme ends. So when we talk about central tendencies, we're talking about this mean, but of course, that changes, and that's why we have different ways of talking about central tendency. Another thing that I want to say that is really important is they use Greek letters in statistics. Don't get confused. Don't let it scare you. I've sat in class for three weeks during my first stats course, and they kept throwing out these symbols, and I was lost for three weeks because I didn't know what the mu was or what that other one was. Now I just know that that's a mean and a standard deviation because I didn't learn the Greek al alphabet, but it is the Greek alphabet, okay? So when you see these symbols, these are two symbols that you'll want to learn if you go on in quantitative statistics. Um, so, Becky, for your idea, um, we're going to use IQ score to talk about this because that makes it concrete. That makes it something that you can kind of get your head around. Um, and IQ scores, kind of like an SAT score. Um, does anyone know the mean for an SAT score? Off the top of their head. Okay. Well, the mean, huh? I had it, but it's gone right now because I'm talking about stats in front of an audience. <laughs> um, so the mean on an IQ test is 100. Okay? And so. For every 10 points above 100, so if your IQ is 110, that's one standard deviation. Okay? So, or I'm sorry, five. Five. Yes. Thank you. What I mean, not what I 
to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for every 15 points, not 10, it's one standard deviation. So when you hit 130, you're at two. Okay. Now, what percentage of people will fall between the mean and an IQ score of 130, which is two standard deviations from the mean? theoretically it's normally distributed however when you start sampling you don't always get a normal distribution now does everyone know what I mean when I say sampling okay and how is sampling different than the population because you pull in from the population a certain amount of things excellent both of you Carol Pat both um, so in our data, if you noticed, our data was not exactly normally distributed. You guys are all pretty normal when we put you together, but not perfectly normal, at least on your answers, right? <laughs> but uh, when we looked at test anxiety, that was about the most normal distribution we had for our data. So given this information, what's the mean? 3.67. It's really nice and it tells you right up here. Okay? <laughs> but if we look at this, if 4 is right here, 4 is just to the right of the mean. 